Okay, so this is what we're going to achieve today. It's basically a kind of video, a vintage video uh, countdown look that just basically counts down to your to when your video starts. It is actually useful in the modern world anyway. It doesn't have to be vintage, but it just if if when you're demonstrating one of your videos, perhaps to a client or something like that, it just uh, kind of prompts people to kind of look at the screen in readiness for when your video actually starts rather than perhaps sometimes missing the start of a video especially if you're going to be creating a, a short clip that you want people to see or review. So there we go let's get started. Okay let's begin this is our default uh, edit screen here. The first thing I'm going to do is drag across create a fusion composition here by dragging across a fusion clip there we go that creates one and I want to make this 10 seconds long so the way I do that is I, I drag our timeline across to the 10 second point there we go let's just do a little fine adjustment exactly 10 seconds as you can see I'm going to drag the fusion clip across and it's snapped to it so now I know this fusion clip is exactly 10 seconds long now I'm going to go across to the uh, fusion page by clicking on the fusion tab there this should open the fusion page there you go there's our media app and I want to create a grey background so the way I do that is I drag my background across there I'm going to make sure it's it's a grey colour by just clicking on that and changing the colour there we go and now if I connect that background to our media out you'll see this is basically what we've got in terms of our media page okay brilliant the next thing I want to do is create the crosshairs, the kind of black crosshairs. And the way I do that is I'm going to work with the uh, with the polygon tool here. Just drag that across there. Um, let's just see where we're up to with the polygon tool. Let me just zoom out a bit, scale. I'm going to scale up to there. We go. And I'm going to apply uh, some guides, show guides. Now then, the, the, this polygon tool just starts when I click on the page here. So the way I'm going to do that. Let's just give a bit, ourselves a bit more space here. The way I do that, I'm going to actually click outside of the viewable area here. There we go. Then I'm going to click outside another part of the viewable area here. Okay, there we go. And that's created one kind of crosshair area. Now I could create two polygon nodes and create the, the, the X and the Y um, crosshairs, but the way I do it, it's quite simple really. Just, just continue the line outside the viewable area like so. There we go and come back on itself across the screen again and now the viewable uh, line is now a crosshair okay let's just click off this screen here brilliant um, to color those what we need to do is um, again add another background drag that across there and as you probably know this when you set up a background it's 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 black so so those lines are automatically black and if I bring that across to this background here, there we go. They're not appearing because there's no thickness to a border width. So I just need to add a little bit of thickness to a border width. Um, there we go. Let's do, I'm just going to do this manually. There we go. We now, we've now got some, some crosshairs in our screen there. Okay, brilliant. The next thing we want to apply is a is is the kind of um, revolving timer, and you'll see what I mean once I've set it up. It's hard to describe. Well, you'll see what I mean. And the way we do that is I add a tool called um, 3D Shape. There we go. And once you click 3D Shape, you're asked you can you can select what that type of 3D shape is, and and it's gonna I'm gonna choose the sphere. There we go. And when we made a 3D shape, we actually need to add another tool so that you can render it. So you go to Add Tool, um, 3D, and then it's, um, I think it's called 3D Renderer, somewhere like that. There you go, a Renderer 3D. Okay. And you need to add that there in, in order to be able to kind of visualize our 3D object in a 2D space, if you like. So I'm just going to drag the output of the 3D Renderer across to the back of our merge document there and that will now uh, present our sphere on the screen so it's a little bit big let's just change the radius of that I'm um, just a little bit of a tip here if you just if you just drag normally 
using your mouse it goes in bigger in increments but if you click on control and then go to your mouse you can actually do it in much smaller increments like so let me just broaden that out a bit so you can see the full screen because you're only seeing part of it there really there we go so it's actually put it in the center which is useful to us I'm going to make it just a little big, bit, bit bigger again there we go nice okay the next thing we want to do is create actually we haven't finished this bit to be honest let me, let me show you what we're going to do now so this is a little it's not tricky but it's an unusual concept this is to so go to your shape and now we want to um, basically go to transform hang on let's go to the shape here let me use the angle button first so I can, if I change that now you can see if I change that now you you can kind of almost imagine what's happening it's creating part of the circle if I keep going along there now it's created sorry the sphere now it's created a full 360 of the sphere what we want to do with that is basically change the orientation of the shape so that we're looking at it almost from above so the way we do that is go to our transform here now I think you might have to bear with me here let's just type in 90 there there we go and I think it might be the Z one 90 on the Z one there we go and let's go back to controls brilliant that's exactly what we want now okay so now you've got zero um, degrees of your sphere showing and as you take that along that linear control there it goes all the way up to 360 and that's that's the effect that you would have seen earlier at the beginning of this video how it kind of does this kind of that the idea of that is that that rotates once every that does that once every second and it's part of your countdown okay so let's just leave that there for the time being now we're going to make a an outer sphere an outer circle the way we do that just drag the ellipse tool down again backgrounds often use a lot the slightly um, misleading type of term I think backgrounds because it's it's just a way of drawing uh, of where you can create color if you like so we've got our ellipse background take the back of our background off again at the back of that merge so we're just just layering there oh it's a solid color we don't want solid color click on your ellipse tool there uncheck that box which says solid okay and usefully I think it's done it the same size as the other one and we can just increase the border width here let's have a look there we go let's just have it about about so and we want to change that color from black to white pure white this time click OK there we go okay so we're building up our bits and bobs here as we go along so the next thing we want here is some kind of countdown text okay so the way we do that is bring our text across here okay there we go and let's just see what it looks like on the screen at the moment Ta -da. can we see any text we can't see any text no let's just type something in first let's just type in hello okay in fact let me just type in a number for let's just type in a number for argument's sake number eight okay that's way too small you want it to be quite large let's have a look at okay this, this slider only goes up so much so we can use the let's go in manually and just type in the figure number one there we go okay brilliant okay so what we want to be able to do is count down automatically as as each second goes by but how do you do that it's not it's not exactly the easiest thing in the world is it so the way you do that is you do it using an expression now the expression sounds complicated but it's not too hard and uh, so remove that there right click in this area with your mouse and come down to this area here called expression okay and the expression is and I'll explain this as I go along it's 10 then put in a minus and then so the reason is it's 10 minus is because we're doing we're counting down oh so yeah I've got it in the wrong place there 10 minus floor now the reason why it's floor is um, it actually counts down by frames and what we want to do is round round the figure to the nearest 25 frames because we're doing 25 frames a second now, the way we do that is to do it like this 10 minus the floor right brackets time and then the figure is sorry the, the, the mass here is divided where's my divided by on the computer that's been a while since I've used it um, divided by 
25 bracket. I think that's right. And what that's doing is it's basically saying divide your number of frames by 25, which is frames per second, to get to get basically seconds, and then the floor stops those seconds kind of being divided, having 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 a um, point something or other. Do you know what I mean? So if I just scroll along here, thinking, oh, I've done that. There we go. So as I scroll along here with with the timeline, you can see now it's counting back perfectly in whole numbers, and it gets to one at the end. Um, it's it's almost zero. So basically, that's what happens. So it goes to one, and then this that that it would then go to zero, which is exactly how you want it. Um, so that's ten seconds long. Obviously, the text the text is too big. Let's just because we want that ten to be able to fit in there. Let's just take the size down a bit. Um, here we go. Ten. That's it. Great. Okay. So the other thing, let's just go back to what we did before with our three D sphere. Now, where is our three D sphere? Here it is, our three D shape. So what we want our shape to do is every second it's got to kind of revolve 360 degrees. So let's go to our shape. There we go. There we go. And here's our angle. So it starts out at being at zero degrees. So let's just check on that to, uh, to add a keyframe. There we go. And now what you want is if we go to the 25 frame mark, just as it turns nine, go back one frame, okay, no, excuse me. <coughs> Go back one frame, and then increase that to the full 360 degree angle. So let me just show you what that does. There we go. If I if I go back along this time frame now, you see what happens. Nice. Okay. So we're up here. Let's just go one more frame onto the 25 frame mark, and we want to bring that back down to zero again, and it will enter it as an automatic keyframe. Okay, we need to do that every 25 frames. Okay, so I'm going to do this now, and then you can you can basically um, I'm going to skip this, obviously, and 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 I'll come back in a few moments when I've done it all. Okay, so we're all done there. Uh, what I've realised is this 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 white area is is a bit too white. It's not how I presented it in the beginning. So. All I need to do there is go into my shape. There we go. Go into material and click on the color there. And I think we're going to make it just slightly not back a bit there. Click OK. In fact, let's just take let's make it a bit brighter than that so that we've got a bit of a difference between the background. There we go. OK, so what happens now is if we uh, as I scroll through the timeline here every second, you will see what's happening. There we go, the, the desired effect. And once you've set that up, it's really easy to change anything you want. You can change the color of your of the outer circle, you can change this color, you can change the, the, the font on your um, on the text. I can show you briefly how to quickly how to do that if you want. So there's a text. You just come down to your fonts here, you can select a different one. Um, some kind of wingdings there, let's have that one. So So really quite simple. Obviously, you'd want if you if, depending on the font shape, you might want to shift them up a bit. They do tend to shift around the screen depending on how how it was all written. So Arial, that's not a bad one, is it? Oh, so it's always worth checking the ten as well, as you can see, the ten there starts to fill the screen a bit. Okay, so I've gone back to Open Sans just because I, I don't mind that one. Um, so there we go. And once you've done that, if you go back to your edit screen, as so, you can now click play and it will work through that and be your intro. Now it's slightly glitching there, obviously, because it's cal calculating it, but, but don't worry about that. When you render it out, that will work perfectly fine. Thank you.